we try to give as much uh, coverage as, as we could to, to our local football club. And, um, and I appeared at a number of events with, with John Holsgrove um, and the World Globe came in on the campaign. I have to give them credit as well. So uh, in our limited way, uh, as, a, as a weekly or twice weekly newspaper, I think there is a limit to what you can do. But, um, you, you know, we, we gave as much of, of a platform as, as we could to, to Tramia. But um, you, the, your older um, uh, fans might remember that uh, whilst that we were trying to do this, there was a BBC film crew from 40 Minutes who were documenting every sort of turn and twist in, in the drama. And um, they were convinced Tramia were doomed. Uh, that was going to be another Atkinson Stanley. And from a documentary maker's point of view, that would have been the perfect ending. You, you know, the, the club that died of shame. But And I think they were well uh, cheesed off uh, when uh, the rescue happened. And, um, you, you know, Tram Tramia managed, managed to, to avoid disaster and... Uh, but there was another thing as well which struck me at the time. It was uh, I was in Jack Butterfield's office, and uh, he said he was swearing quite a lot. He said these bloody fans who keep phoning up asking if uh, if we've got programmes for the Hereford match, and that was going to be uh, everyone thought that was going to be the last match ever played at Prenton Park. And uh, you can call them ghouls, you can call them vultures, but you know they, suddenly Tramia had interest from all over the country from people wanting to buy programs for what they thought was going to be the final game that's not quite the attention we were after but you know it's um, it was quite satisfying that you know to see that people who bought 20 30 programs a piece were were, uh, were left with a fingers bend bit i think i'm right in saying if i've got mm. my dates right that would have been the 29th of april 1981 that game tramby won 2 on steve peplow and john kelly uh, got the goals so how, how close, realistically, how how perilous was it? How close did it come to their no no longer being a Tranmere Rovers? Yeah, it's uh, oh, was it Gerald Gould was the chairman at the time, and uh, he was under no no illusions. He said, you, you, you know, that uh, we're, we're doomed unless unless we get a benefactor coming along. I and I don't think it was boy crying wolf. Um, you, you know, it was a genuine sense of peril and. Uh, um, I wasn't privy to the uh, the balance sheets uh, or to the club's accounts, but um, you, you know they, they trusted me enough, uh, and a couple of the directors who who I got friendly with, and you know they confided in me that uh, it, it looked like the, all, all the all the doom mongers were, were going to be proved right, and uh, you know they, I know Whittle Council gets a bad rap a lot of the times, but uh, you know they they they. Stop, uh, stood up and uh, uh, came, came to the club's rescue. A fascinating period of the club, um, club's history, because as you say, even then being rescued didn't really rescue them. It wasn't until yeah. Peter Johnson came along uh, in 1986-87 that the club did finally start to go on an upward curve. And it's a far cry from the club that you'd have started watching at the end of the 60s and the start of the 70s, when actually football in this country would have been properly booming in the the, the kind of shadow of the World Cup win in 1966. I'm looking at some of the, the crowds that Tranmere would have had for those games. And there was a there was a home game in the 68-69 season against Chester where there were 11,500 at Prenton Park. There was obviously a couple of games in that big FA Cup run against the likes of Huddersfield and Coventry. And then, of course, the away tie against Everton. I mean, it was an absolutely incredible period, the 60s and 70s, in terms of football mm. in this country. And... and it took Tramway quite a while to get back to that perch. Well, um, one game I think you missed out there was um, when they played Stoke City in the FA Cup and um, in the 70s. And there's a picture uh, in the Birkenhead News of me running onto the pitch <laughs> in a parker. Everyone park, everyone wore parkers in those days, celebrating the Tramway goal and... Uh, and that was that was uh, an incredible moment. I can't remember what the crowd was that day, but it felt like people were hanging off the hanging off the rafters and uh, um, mobbing the stadium. And um, you, you know that 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 just told you what Tramia meant to, uh, to to the town. 
and um, yeah, I'd, I'd, the administration period, I'd, uh, I'd moved away. In fact, I was working in Hong Kong at the time, so it was uh, I'd, I'd travelled across the other side of the world uh, to the South China Morning Post. But um, so that period of Tramia's history is a, is a bit of a um, closed book to me. But it was satisfying to see, you, you know, that they were um, going to Wembley and uh, and beating the likes of Everton and and uh, famously and uh, some of the great cup runs, and you know with John Aldridge uh, in particular uh, to the fore. Um, it was brilliant. You know, couldn't happen to a nicer club.